Hey, this is Mike from the Run Testers, and this is our multi-tester review of the Huawei Watch GT Runner. The Runner is essentially a more running focused version of the Huawei Watch GT3, but offers all of the same non-running features and hardware. So it runs on Huawei's Harmony OS, which does give you access to third-party apps, and it will work with Android phones and iPhones. On the design front, you're getting a 46 mm case as opposed to the 42 mm and 46 mm options you get with the GT3. It comes with a polymer case and silicon strap, so it does come in lighter than the GT3 as well, which features a metal and plastic case combo. One key design difference between the GT Runner and the GT3 is to do with positioning of the antenna, which is now hidden inside of the watch lugs that Huawei says reduces the weight of the watch and interference when locking onto a GPS signal. There's the same true scene 5.0 heart rate monitor setup as the GT3, which has been upgraded from 4.0 to reduce light interference and overall improve accuracy of that heart rate monitoring. If you don't trust the HR data, you can pair up an external chest strap monitor with additional support for speed and cadence and power meters for cyclists as well. You're getting support for the five major satellite systems and there's dual band GNS support, which means it can receive two different signals at different frequencies from satellite systems to help improve outdoor tracking accuracy. In terms of running modes, you're getting outdoor, indoor and trail running modes and there's support for the ability to set up interval training sessions, but only from the watch. Huawei is offering customizable training programs and training insights here too, with training load a familiar one, a training index to assess fitness and fatigue levels, recovery insights, VO2 max estimates, and predicted race times. Those predicted race times are based on your running ability index, which looks at historical running data like heart rate, pace, distance, and workout frequency to score you from 40.7 to 85.3. Huawei also includes a lactate threshold test, which takes 20 to 30 minutes and needs to be done outside to help make sure you're not over or under training. There's navigation features here too, so you can share routes via the Huawei Health app with offline navigation support and a simple back to start mode on offer. Run data lives inside of Huawei's Health app, but you do have the capability to share data to Adidas Running and mapping service Commute. In terms of battery life, you're looking at up to two weeks, but there's no specification on what kind of GPS battery life you can expect from this watch. So I think that the uh, GT Runner is a lovely looking watch. I think it's really well designed. It's nice and slim. It sits very comfortably on the wrist. I found I could wear it kind of 24 seven without any kind of comfort issues at all. And the screen is really good. It's really nice and bright. Um, and if you have it not in always on mode, it reacts really quickly to wrist turns and you know shows either kind of your workout stats or your kind of, or you know, you're just your watch face in general use. And then outside on the run, I found it was clear to see my kind of stats in all kind of conditions, sunny, cloudy, and all that. Um, only real gripe actually is the screen is very large and bright, and it probably could accommodate a few more stats in your run screens than Huawei allows you to put on there. All in all, I have very few problems with the design, except that I the fact that the circular knob at the top is essentially the back button and the one at the bottom is the kind of go forward button through me like consistently like I was constantly going back and I want to go forward and vice versa I just but yeah you can also use the touch screen to kind of navigate menus and I ended up doing that more because it is very responsive and easy to use. So in terms of design and fit all pretty much spot on for me in terms of what you get from the GT runner in terms of what you would want or what I would want from a kind of running watch generally it's nice and light um, you've got a nice big screen on here um, the strap was nice and comfortable with a kind of kind of breathable kind of uh, ventilated type that I would like to use. Um, it's got a nice flexible stretch to it. You can change the straps as well and you can do it reasonably easy. You are gonna probably have to use Huawei's own ones, but it's nice that you do have the option to do that. Now I've run with the Huawei Watch uh, 3, the GT3 and the GT2e, which we have a, a review of on the channel as well. Well, I would say where this um, watch kind of, you know, fits in terms of the design and how those are best suited um, for running, this is much lighter in, in comparison for me. I think what you want from a running, running watch is what you're going to get here. Um, I think the, the screen for me was pretty much spot on in terms of vibrancy. Um, the buttons, you know, you're only getting two buttons where a lot of kind of running watches you're getting kind of a, an array of physical buttons. But I think the combination of the touchscreen display, which is, I think, you know, pretty pretty good in terms of responsiveness um, and these buttons work pretty well i like the fact that the the top button you can kind of twist to kind of go through menus um, so for kind of a navigating and interactive kind of point of view with the watch itself i think you're getting a good experience overall 
as I said, nice and light, a good screen on here. Um, it's waterproof as well. I do do a lot of swimming as well. And, you know, it was comfortable to wear during swims too. Uh, so, yeah, all very positive for me on the front um, with the well, watch GT run in terms of uh, design, fit and, uh, you know, generally wearing it for running and, you know, day to day use as well. Overall, I'd say that the core running experience on the GT Runner is pretty good, um, but kind of drilling down into the real detail for kind of my very obsessive use, I did have some problems with it, in particular the GPS. For general runs, GPS was fine. It was more than accurate enough. It matched up well to the Garmin Epix 2, and it kind of never really threw up any very particularly odd tracks. But, but when I was basically using it for fast runs and using it to really pace hard workouts, I just did find the GPS was lacking a bit in terms of what it produced in terms of split pace. It's great. I will say this, that for that the Huawei GT Runner has a split screen. I think that's a really good addition so I can see my lap pace which is always key to me in all my workouts but just found that it was never that accurate especially when running on like loops where it would sometimes underestimate the distance and sometimes overestimate it like on the track it always overestimated my distance you know that doesn't really matter on a track I know how far I'm running but I do a lot of kind of workouts out on the streets running kind of around loops of industrial estates or even in long straight lines like along a canal towpath and basically the pacing stats that the GPS delivered weren't accurate enough for me to use for those workouts and that's almost kills it dead for me because I do use GPS pacing so much and it doesn't need to be perfect like no watch is really perfect but this would just jump around too much or it would just be wrong like obviously wrong and it wouldn't catch up to the fact that I'd sped up suddenly at the kind of when I hit lap I jumped my pace you know kind of 30 seconds per kilometer and it just take too long to catch up and it wouldn't average out and it just didn't feel right and it undercut the workout basically. I do tend to go overboard in this kind of thing a bit but uh, I will say, yeah, the GPS just was always a bit of a worry for me and it wasn't up to the standards of other multi-band watches like the Phoenix 7, Epix 2, or even the Apple Watch. Heart rate was also a mixed bag for me. I had some great runs with it, but nearly always when I upped the pace, it would lock onto my cadence and just I'd get very high heart rate readings. In fact, I'd get alerts saying my heart rate was too high and that's really annoying. So um, yeah, you can connect a chest strap to this, which is a great addition. First time I tried that, it was very hard. It didn't work at all. But since then, uh, Touchwood has been very easy to connect a chest strap to this. Um, and it's definitely worth doing that because you need the accurate stats to feed into the kind of training analysis on the watch, which is pretty impressive. The workouts are fairly basic in terms of the ones you can set up yourself in terms of kind of simple intervals. It's not really an in-depth structured workout builder, but there are lots of workouts on the watch already and you can build entire training plans that are customized to your level with quite a clever kind of uh, training plan builder that actually I thought was really impressive. Um, and at the end you get like a target time range. And it, although it does say <laughs> within that target time range, it does say like, well, this will be very easy to, for you to hit if you do this training plan. It's like, you know, it's never gonna be that easy to hit like a target time in a marathon. But yeah, it's really nicely done. The workouts sync to the watch very easily and they all kind of like make sense to me as someone was a fairly experienced runner. I have a coach and I know what, you know, I would be looking out for in a, in a kind of training plan with dedicated workouts and they're not always that complex, but you know, there's things like strides thrown in and they do all seem to make sense in kind of building a balanced training plan. So I think a lot of people could use this watch to train for an event and it would certainly help them get fitter and hit the kind of target times you can set with the watch. So I was making a big deal about GPS accuracy on this watch. So it's including the same multi-system dual band GNS support that it had on the Huawei Watch 3 Pro. Pro, um, but that's also kind of starting to feature and filter out onto other watches as well. So I've used it recently on the Xiaomi um, Watch S1 Active and Watch S1. Um, and we're, to, we're starting to see this kind of technology kind of filter through, which is ultimately aiming to improve accuracy where it can be potentially a bit spotty. So kind of very kind of around running around tall buildings, um, kind of heavily kind of wooded areas as well where you know it can affect the signal and ultimately what it's doing is it's being able to grab more signals from the supported satellite systems to improve the accuracy now in terms of how i got on with the gps accuracy i compared it to the phoenix 7 and it's kind of multi-band mode and the epix 2 which also has that same mode and those are the most accurate watches i found so far in terms of plotting those routes for me now in terms of general distance tracking um it was a little short on most runs, but not, you know, not massively off in terms of what I've got on the Phoenix 7 and the Epix 2. Um, when I kind of looked a little bit more in detail of those kind of plotted routes, um, ultimately the Huawei did seem a little bit more inaccurate in terms of plotting those routes. It was at times was putting me through kind of running through buildings. Um, it was a little bit off the kind of routes I knew that I was kind of sticking to. Um, 
So the, that kind of promised GPS accuracy from us what hasn't quite worked out for me. The GPS accuracy, not quite there for me. Um, good general runs, uh, but it really mattered in terms of that optimal accuracy, it didn't quite deliver. So in terms of heart rate monitoring performance, I would say the GT Runner kind of mirrors the experience I've got with other Huawei watches, so the Watch 3 and the GT3, in the sense that now, Huawei are trying to make some improvements in terms of the sensors, uh, the sensor technology and the algorithms that are kind of calculating um, that information for you. I still found that kind of on a lot of my runs, it still came up a bit up sh short against the chest straps that I used them against. So I used the Wahoo ticker, um, the uh, my zone chest strap as well. And what I found was it was kind of that kind of 10 BPM out from a chest strap monitor, which Based on Huawei's kind of claim, they will promise an accuracy within 10 BPM of a chest strap. Now, it's, for me, it was definitely on the end of that scale in terms of that accuracy, which, you know, I've seen better accuracy from an Apple Watch, um, kind of most Garmin watches in terms of that performance and kind of steady runs. Now, on interval runs, what I saw was the kind of average and max heart rate readings kind of actually matched up. But when you look at the data in the um, in the apps and compare, it doesn't really tell the same story in terms of uh, those sessions. So that one of the sessions was an interval session. While the kind of numbers matched up, the graph didn't really match up really for, uh, from what I got uh, in the data um, that I got after the run. Um, so I think the key thing here really is that you can pair um, an external heart rate monitor, which I managed to pair it with a polar chest strap, um, a my zone chest strap as well, um, and I didn't have any issues in terms of pairing it. And that's going to be really important, I think, for the point of view in terms of the other information that this watch is going to generate in terms of that heart rate data. So for me, the heart rate monitoring um, still not fantastic. Um, felt a little bit generous for me compared to a chest strap monitor. Crucially, you do have that opportunity to pair this to an external heart rate monitor. Um, sensor, which I think is going to make a massive uh, improvement in terms of the data you're going to get uh, from this watch. So one feature that's really nice to see here is that you have the ability to upload routes to this watch and you have some kind of basic navigation features here. Now in terms of getting those routes onto your watch, I think actually it's pretty straightforward and pretty easy to do. You can kind of upload it through the Huawei Health app, or you can do it through the third-party app Commute. I did it through the Huawei Health app. It was very quick and easy to do. Um, once it's kind of synced to your watch, you do have kind of pretty basic navigation in terms of what you see on the watch. So it's kind of a blue line and you're kind of following that around. Um, so it's, yeah, it's not the most sophisticated navigation, but you do have it there. And actually the ability to put those routes uh, onto the watch is very straightforward to do. Um, in terms of navigation features, basic, but actually quite nice to see that you can uh, get those routes on there very quickly. Um, and, you, you know, it does a good enough job, I think, you know, but you are obviously going to get better navigation support uh, and other watches um, that are out there around this price. So in terms of other running focus features to highlight here, I think um, you've got uh, some kind of kind of running watch kind of staples that you, you expect to find and kind of other watches that you're getting here. So you can create interval uh, training. That's all done on the watch, which, you know, it's a shame you can't do it on the app as well, which I think would make it a little bit easier to kind of create those. Um, that lets you create, you know, kind of warm up and warm downs and kind of sets. Um, and generally that worked okay for me. You know, it's not the best kind of interval running support um, I found, but ultimately, you know, you've got that option there to do that. The other kind of big feature here really is the coaching and, you know, the plans that you can create here. It's a bit like Garmin Coach for me. So ultimately you're, you're going into the app, you're kind of putting a bit of information about your level of running, how much you've run, it, how much you want to run during a week, and then it will create that plan for you send that over to the watch, you know, when you've got a plan kind of coming up, it will suggest that um, session for you when you want to go for a run. Um, you know, the sessions seem generally fine for me, you know, on top of you already getting the kind of, um, the, tr the kind of running coach modes that you get on the Huawei watch that have been around for the, for the two series and now on the three series and the GT runner, um, it works really nicely. There's some nice beginner friendly features there, which I think, you know, gives this a little bit more appeal for someone who's just new to running and wants a little bit of guidance in terms of that information. One thing I found with the coaching, it didn't seem to support when you're in kind of treadmill and uh, kind of trail running mode, oddly, it seems to only work in that kind of general running mode. Um, I don't know if that's a particular quirk there. Maybe that's something Huawei can look at. Um, but yeah, 
those coaching um, features generally, I think, are really kind of well executed um, and kind of nice bonus kind of additions here. If you're new to running and you want something uh, that kind of offers you, offers you a bit more guidance in terms of what you should do, when you should run and get you running a time or distance that you want to run. Uh, I think the training analysis is really well done on the watch. It's very well presented on that nice bright screen of all the colour coding and there's a good array of stats as well. Um, as of all these things, the kind of race predictions I think are a bit out. I ran like a 111 half marathon whilst wearing this watch and it, and it clocked 22k that day but still kept predicting that I was going to run a 113 half marathon. That's the same with Garmin, that's the same with lots of these watches. Predictions always take them with a pinch of salt. But the other stats in there are quite useful. I think the recovery is really nicely done in the way it kind of ticks up and tells you what you could kind of be doing now. You know, like if you're only 50% recovered, you could go for like a light jog, but it wouldn't recommend hard training, that kind of thing. And the training index, uh, which is, you know, is quite, is feeding in quite a lot of complicated data is well presented to just kind of say whether you're fatigued, too fatigued, what kind of thing you should be doing. So it's not as detailed and in depth as the kind of training analysis you'll get from people like Garmin, Polar and Coros, but actually the simplicity of what you get here works in its favor quite a lot of the time, I think. It's clear, it's pretty easy to understand and it makes sense. Yeah, I think it's a really good feature on the GT Runner, the training analysis you're getting here. So I was definitely trying to make a bigger push in terms of training analysis, trying to give you a better sense of where you are with your running, um, where you are with your training, and whether you know you should kind of ease off, whether you're at kind of that optimal kind of training um, load. All the things that we've seen on Garmin, on Polar watches, um, more recently on Coros watches as well. In general, I found them pretty good. You know, in some aspects, I found them a little bit more reliable in terms of what I got from a Garmin watch in terms of things like the predicted times it felt a little bit more in line in terms of my training and the times it was kind of pushing out even from those kind of first early runs that i was doing now running ability index is one of the kind of um, features of Huawei's pushing here and it's an interesting one it kind of essentially scores you in a kind of weird scale um, and gives you a sense of where, what you could run how quick you could run a certain kind of distance so when i was testing it um, and i was kind of deep into my kind of marathon training it was kind of suggesting that i could run a 330 kind of marathon which is pretty much where I was in terms of my training in terms of what I felt I had the capacity to do at that time you know I'm running at kind of 324 three you know I've run 324 326 so that's kind of there thereabouts in terms of my level of running from a for a marathon distance point of view and even kind of the predicted times kind of seem to match up in terms of where I was in my training now things like the kind of training loads um kind of recovery suggestions I found them a little bit more excessive, but not in a, in a really extreme way compared to um, the Garmin um, kind of similar insights, basically, which are kind of dri were driven from kind of my heart rate um, data from my chest strap and all the kind of other information from Garmin watches. I found, you know, I used it for the kind of Bilbao, um, not quite marathon, but ultimately it was giving me similar recovery time, um, maybe a little bit more, maybe an extra, like, you know, more, you know, a few more hours or maybe an extra day, but... Ultimately, it didn't feel over the top. Um, I use it for Landmark, the London Landmarks half as well that we did a video on as well. Um, and it was a similar story as well. In terms of the kind of the predicted kind of uh, information, you know, what it was taking from those insights and my, my running data, it felt useful. You know, it's always going to just be guidance. I'm never, you know, I don't ever think it's going to be something or even at this point that you can live by. But ultimately, in terms of the insights that I did get from this watch, um, I found it pretty useful, pretty reliable in terms of what I got. So in terms of the smartwatch experience, what I would say about the Hawaii Watch GT Runner is that it's not going to give you the best smartwatch experience you can get um, around this price or generally from smartwatches. What you're getting, you're going to have to make some compromises. You can use it with Android and iOS. I predominantly use it with Android, which gives you the best experience um, based on my testing and testing of Huawei watches in general. So things like notification support, um, so you can kind of, you can respond to those notifications uh, with kind of default, default responses and kind of emojis. Um, your mu the music player that you have on here it only works with your own music, so it doesn't work with third party um, streaming service like some other watches. Um, you're getting things like weather forecast. You have Huawei Celia Smart Assistant, um, which only works with Huawei phones. So it wasn't what, something I could really um, test out. Um, so generally, for me, I think that it's fine. You know, mainly I'm looking at notifications uh, support, and I think from that you know point of view, it works very nicely, particularly from kind of a, an Android perspective. Um, you do have um, access to um, third-party apps or an app store essentially from Huawei's kind of new app gallery. 
um, and you can connect some um, apps to it. So at the moment, it's Commute um, for kind of your routing um, and Adidas running. Now, there is a kind of a unofficial Strava workaround. There is an official app yet. The app store itself, there's not a huge amount in there of the kind of third party or kind of big name uh, apps um, that you would expect to find or you find in kind of Google's Play Store and Apple's um, App Store as well. Actually mentioned as well is watch faces. If you love your watch faces, there's a good, you know, good collection there of the free ones and the ones that are kind of preloaded. They do start to get a bit more expensive when you start to venture into the store once you get more apps. So I think there was some were coming up to as much as five pounds or five dollars. So that's quite expensive for watch faces. So I would say the smartwatch experience is good. Not the best you're going to get out there, um, but definitely your best or the kind of optimal experience is if you pair it with an Android phone, if you want access to all of those features that are available um, on this watch. So generally I had the always on screen activated for workouts, but not general use with the watch. And I'd kind of put it in do not disturb mode at night. Uh, and it was lasting me over a week pretty comfortably. That's usually with kind of about five to eight hours of outdoor running each week. Um, and then a couple of outdoor cycles and some indoor workouts. And yeah, battery life wasn't a big problem for me at all with the watch. I think you could have the always on screen on all the time, but like I said, I don't think it's not actually that great in general use because it is quite a very plain watch screen. Um, so I think it's best to turn that off, save a bit of battery, and then it will kind of last you a week, even with fairly intense use in terms of your outdoor running. So in terms of battery life, generally Huawei talks about battery in terms of kind of smartwatch life. So in terms of, you know, what you can get using it day to day for notifications and also for your GPS tracking as well. Now it doesn't talk about a particular GPS battery number. So it's kind of, these numbers are kind of based on my testing essentially. Now I would say this is a watch that's good for a week's worth of training, kind of heavy usage. Um, I kind of use it for three to four runs a week. One of those was kind of a couple of hours, so a longer training run. Um, and for me, using the screen without the always on, uh, with kind of notifications enabled and kind of firing through, um, and some of the other features that you're getting here on this watch, um, I, find, I found it was generally good for kind of seven days use. So, which is, you know, it's still pretty good showing and there and thereabouts in terms of watches around this price range. Now, in terms of the GPS kind of battery life, I found for kind of an hour's worth of running, I saw a drop off of around eight to 10%. So that would kind of work out to about 15 hours, maybe around about in terms of GPS battery life, which at this price point isn't quite there in terms of what you're going to get from maybe a Garmin, um, a similarly priced Garmin or Polar Watch and maybe even kind of a cheaper Coral Swatch as well. So you're maybe not getting class leading GPS battery life. I think you're getting enough roughly for a week's worth of use. So I think in general, Huawei are the brand I've got the most hope for in terms of cracking a really good running smartwatch. They seem to focus on the right things in terms of the improvements they try and make around things like training analysis and GPS and that kind of stuff that really matters to me as a runner. And with the GT Runner, they've almost made a great running watch, but it's not quite just because of the few little problems that they have there. I think the GPS is still the biggest problem of all for me. Like it does kind of undermine its use as a serious running watch when it comes to hard workouts when you do want good accurate data in terms of your pacing. It struggles against kind of the watches out there from the big sports brands in my experience. There's also a limited kind of customization of data screens and kind of structured workouts, things that aren't a huge problem, but yeah, do still speak to the fact this is kind of a smart watch with loads of running extras rather than a dedicated sports watch where all those things are really core to the experience. Also say at the price, kind of 250 pounds, you're going up against some very, very good serious sports watches like the Forerunner 245 from Garmin, the new Polar Pacer Pro is exactly the same price. And it's got a lot of impressive features um, as a sports watch. And then the Coros Pace 2 is a lot you know, cheaper, £180. If you're all about the running, those are still the way to go. But if you really do want you know, a nicer looking watch with a nice bright screen, um, I think this has got a really strong case for being one of the better, kind of better running smartwatches out there. You know, the Garmin Venue 2 is a lot more expensive and actually this has got better battery life. I prefer the screen on this. Um, and you know, there's still lots of good things on here, including routing and those really you know, well done training plans. Uh, the Apple Watch I think is still kind of superior because mainly because of the App Store basically. And this is one of the areas where this watch fails a bit is as a smartwatch. It's not actually that smart in terms of what it can bring to the table, especially for someone like me who uses an iPhone uh, and then you know, loses some of the features on this watch, which you do get with Android phones. If you are on iOS, the Apple Watch is definitely the way to go, I think. Uh, uh, and then you just got to start digging into all the amazing apps available to make it, you know, a really, really good running watch. Whereas, you know, the native workout experience on the Apple Watch isn't very good and it's much better on this, but you can find apps on the Apple Watch that 
are better than what you get from the GT runner. And then I think it's more accurate in terms of heart rate and GPS. So yeah, overall, I do think lots of runners will find everything they need here. It's a good running experience. It's nearly there. I think we're going to see a really amazing running smartwatch very soon with a very good core native running experience. And it probably will be from Huawei because they've made the most kind of effort on this front. So my verdict on the Hawaii World Watch GT runner is that it is, I would say it's, it's, well, it's definitely Huawei's best running watch or best effort at making a running watch. I mean, it's called GT runner. It is very much focused at runners. Now, I had a really good experience with the Hawaii Watch GT 2E and that clearly was a kind of stepping stone towards this watch and Huawei trying to create something that's a better fit for runners. And I think there's a lot there to like. I think the software is really strong in terms of you know, what you get on the watch. I think it's improving off the watch as well. Um, Design-wise, I think it's pretty much spot on. You've got a great screen. It's nice and light. You know, you, you don't, you know, you can wear it all day. You can wear it for runs. It doesn't feel uncomfortable to wear. Um, and then when you dig into kind of performance, running performance in terms of the accuracy, in terms of what you get in terms of information, it's almost there. It's almost there, I would say. Um, the accuracy, you know, the promise improved accuracy is not quite there but for generally for most runs it should be okay the fact you are getting the ability to pair heart rate monitor to this will uh, make up for what i think is still one of its weakest elements the heart rate monitoring without it isn't fantastic um i think battery life you're going to probably get more gps battery life around this price from other watches i think the 41245 will offer you more i think the new polar pacer which kind of sits at the same price will get you more battery life just about as well but I think in terms of if, if you're looking for um, an option, that kind of 250, 260 price, I think the, the things that would maybe sway you um, from this, from away from the Polar kind of Pacer, which we haven't tested yet, but it, you know, on, on paper looks like it's going to be another kind of solid um, kind of addition at this price. And then the Garmin 40245, which I have spent a lot of time with, I think you're getting, you know, you're obviously getting a better quality screen. Um, I think some nice kind of um, analysis features going on there that you do obviously get on the Garmin and Polar Watch as well, but I think it's really well nice presented here. And those kind of coaching and training features you get here as well. Those core running features, I still feel are better executed on the Garmin and Polar Watches. For me, a very good watch, almost there. I think it's kind of what Nick kind of feels about this as well. I think, it, you know, outside of those kind of big names, you know, the the Polar Garmin Chorus guys, you know, th this is kind of making the best effort, you know, outside of, you know, you know, with its big tech brands that are kind of entering this space. Apple still kind of, I think, nails it, but that's, you know, it's a little bit more expensive. Um, but I think if you're an Android user, you're looking for a good option, um, this is one to kind of consider. Would I get it over a Garmin or a Polar or a Chorus at the moment? Maybe not, but I think the the design and the screen may sway some people. I don't think it's a bad watch. I think it's a really good effort from Huawei. So that point three is a really strong uh, option. Is it the best so there you have it. That is our take on the Huawei Watch GT Runner. If you've got any questions about our testing, let us know in the comments. As always, like and subscribe, hit that little bell to find out about our latest videos. And yeah, we'll see you for the next run testers video.